All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have a lot to talk about today. Some exciting news, some games that were announced, as well as some updates to Xbox and Xbox Cloud Gaming. We will start with that, but before we do jump into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you do like daily gaming news and daily gaming content. And also check out my link to my Spotify. It is in the description. So we'll start off here with just a quick update here to Xbox Game Pass, specifically Xbox Cloud Gaming. As you know, Xbox Cloud Gaming is available where you can play your Game Pass catalog pretty much anywhere anywhere on your phone on your browser on your tv and one of the things that has been missing has been the social features and just making it more streamlined with the overall xbox interface when you load it up on your console and now they have finally brought an update to bring all of that over and give you a really nice slick interface with using cloud gaming and i know for me personally i've actually been using cloud gaming a lot more recently i tweeted about it i believe last week or so that xbox cloud gaming right now is starting to turn me into a believer and i don't know if it's because they've increased the service or my internet has gotten better but i've been playing cloud gaming at my house on wi-fi uh, just out on the go on my phone while traveling and over just the cellular network and it's been working flawlessly, which has been pretty shocking to me because previously, a few years ago, I wasn't a big fan of Xbox Cloud Gaming, but something has changed, I think. And they're adding some more features here. This one here says the revamped social experience for Xbox Cloud Gaming on browser and TV is here. The updated interface lets you enjoy party chat outside of games on the browser, find and manage friends, send messages, and more. So if you do go in to Xbox Cloud Gaming just via your browser, there will be a, an Xbox button in it that you can click. And it basically is similar to what you get on the console itself. This is another step in taking the entire Xbox ecosystem, streamlining it into one. And what I think is going to be putting this over the top eventually is when you're not just accessing your Game Pass games via this. You're actually going to be able to access your entire Xbox accounts with games that you have purchased. Once that experience comes out, if it comes out, that is going to be something that I think has put this entire ecosystem over the top and we'll get a lot more people really, really buying in to this whole cloud gaming experience that Xbox is offering and this whole ecosystem experience that they are offering. Now, when we talk about AAA games, AAA games are going kind of downhill in terms of the fact that they are costing more and more to make. They're far more expensive and developers and publishers are taking less risks. One of those risks that they have taken recently has been putting AAA games on mobile iOS ports to be precise. And when this stuff did start coming out, I was thinking this could potentially change the game as we are now seeing people actually being able to play games like Assassin's Creed Mirage directly on an iPhone, which would take the need away for any other device to start playing these major AAA games. But it looks like it isn't paying off. It is at least isn't paying off yet. It is still very much too niche. It may expand out and, and be better in the future. But the sales of these big AAA games on these phones are not doing very well. In fact, this says here, it's worth stressing that these AAA games can only be played on the most expensive high-spec iPhones and iPads on the market, but even so, the estimated sales figures are woeful. In a report published by App Figures, it was suggested that fewer than 3,000 people have paid to unlock the full version of Assassin's Creed Mirage since it was released a few years ago. Now, it is a $50 game if you want to play through the entire thing. You can test it out on your iPhone, but then you can pay $50 to get access to the entire game. And then they also say here that the Resident Evil 4 has been downloaded around 350,000 times and only 7,000 consumers have converted to the fully priced premium product. So these major AAA games launching on iOS, launching on iPhones, are selling thousands of copies. They're only literally selling in the four finger range not even the five figure range which is kind of crazy to think about because i'm assuming that porting these games over to these platforms with the specs that they have to get them to run on takes a decent amount of work and i wonder what this means for these ports going forward if is it worth their investment is it worth their time will we see more and are they just playing this right now as a very very early nascent markets where they're kind of testing out to see where people if they want games on this and if they don't sell, will they just stop making the games there? And still sticking on the whole AAA game front, a lot of announcements for big AAA games are early. And 
The reason they're announced early is they say here for fear of being canceled. Again, because the AAA industry is kind of going downhill with we're seeing the rising costs, the cancellations, the studio closures, all of those things. It says here, have you ever noticed that some of the largest AAA games on the market are announced earlier than before? How it always feels that when a big game is revealed, it's still five, six or seven years off at least. And we have plenty of examples of that and kind of annoys people when they're hearing about these games so early and then you don't hear about it forever. You start getting those questions. Is there development hell? Is there something wrong with the game? Is it even still going to be coming out? It's a big issue here with announcing games very, very early, but we kind of have an insight on this now. Mark Dara is known uh, as the creator of the Dragon Age series and currently is working as a consultant on the new Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, and has his own YouTube channel where he addressed this topic as to why AAA games take so long to release. And, and here's what he says. There might be reasons why it's important for studios or publishers to have the game in the public consciousness. It might be because the publisher slate is a little weak and they want to the public to remember it still has important games in its back pocket. It might be because the studio wants the game announced because they're worried the publisher might kill it otherwise. And then he adds, it's not usually the best strategy for building up attention and hype for the game. Saying studios can kind of be misleading on this front because they'll say things like we've started work on Elder Scrolls 6 or they might even have a trailer for the game even though the current team size is under 10 people. I mean, you see that all the time with these splash screens and getting people hyped up because of the title and the notoriety of the IP. But the reality is they probably haven't really started deep development on it. They're still in the very, very early stages with a small team. He continues here and says, so they're giving the impression that there is this parallel development that the team is working on this game, when in fact, it's a few people having a few meetings and not much is being done. So, I mean, that is kind of what we are seeing in this history. That is what is happening and the fear goes into the fact that I think they don't want to be canceled. If there isn't a public sentiment, any public hype for the stuff that they're working on, those games may end up being canceled. So they go out there and they they announce it early to try to build up that hype. And that's why I guess we see a lot of games announced far earlier and we're waiting years and years for the development of them. And that's just another thing that's happening right now within AAA gaming is they're taking far longer to develop. It's a lot more risk to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to get these games created, not being 100% sure that you're going to get any return on investment. So they're kind of doing whatever they can to continue to move forward. So that's just some interesting stuff here on AAA games, how the market is changing and, and where it's going and why we're seeing some of the things that we do see. But we'll jump back over here to some... Uh, patents some interesting stuff here first playstation has a new patent revealing a new controller concept that uses conductive ink one of the things with the playstation 5 when it did release is that they did put out a brand new controller with the dual sense with some new features and everything which is i think was a, a major upgrade over the ps4 controller but there's a new patent here it's a spotted by Xputer. PlayStation's latest patent talks about a controller that gives players a new level of freedom towards customization. This concept will work on a flat service and the users will have to personally draw the layout for the computer simulation buttons that fit their needs perfectly. Players would need a regular first, however, to link the hand-drawn controllers to the actual buttons on the standard controller. And they say additionally, there will be an anti-fatigue key a feature designed to enhance button functionality. In some instances, players will press buttons a single time repeatedly or keep them pressed. And this anti-fatigue key will ensure that players can enjoy a higher level of customization for their button presses, providing a smoother and more enjoyable gaming experience. And it's a, it's just a new patent. PlayStation puts out tons of different patents all the time and not all of them do come true. This one is very, very interesting. I wonder if this is anything that would ever actually happen. Having an ink controller, I guess you could call it it's conductive ink where you're actually drawing buttons and their functionality on a flat service. I know for me personally, I think about that and all I could think about is like the touch controls on a smartphone when you're playing mobile games and how I absolutely hate those. I need the feeling, I need those tactile buttons when I'm playing video games. I can't have just hitting a screen where you're not actually feeling the specific key that you're pressing. So I don't think I would like that. I don't think that many people would, would see it as that intuitive unless it just really feels insanely good in your fingers. There's a lot of feedback when you're hitting this conductive ink, but it's just an interesting pattern I did want to talk about. I'm sure 
going forward into the PlayStation 6, we will see some newer upgrades to their controllers or something like that, but I don't think it's going to be a huge change away from the DualSense. In fact, they may even do what Xbox did this generation with the next-gen PlayStation and give you that full backwards compatibility with their accessories. I think that would probably be a smart move, and they're probably looking at what Xbox did and, and wanting to do something along those lines as we have seen them do that stuff even with like the backwards compatibility. Now, another piece of, I guess, was a patent and then was in development and never came out was Xbox Keystone, something we've heard about a, a lot before it was officially canceled. And that was a streaming box that Xbox was working on to just give another access point to their ecosystem and to Xbox Cloud Gaming and Xbox Game Pass. Well, we finally have our first detailed look at Keystone, the cloud streaming console design. So this was back in 2021, Microsoft announced it was working on a dedicated streaming device, something you would just put on your TV and really probably have not very much hardware in there and just give you access to the cloud if you don't have a smart TV, because we are seeing Xbox Cloud Gaming on smart TV, specifically the Samsung TVs. But it says here, unfortunately it appears Microsoft has since scrapped plans to ship Xbox Keystone due to an inability to bring the price down to a level where it made sense for customers. Xbox CEO Phil Spencer is on record saying the device should have cost around 99 or 129 but the co company was unable to achieve this and i would say 99 not even 129 if they were to put this out it has to be 99 dollars 100 dollars, and, and have a controller in there as well and just get people uh, as a the lowest possible entry point where people can get access to xbox game pass but we never it never came out we never saw it and this is the first actual look of it uh, uh, just a small square with a circle on top and a power button and a pairing button. That was all it was going to be, just a small little square design. It's a patent that was discovered here by Windows Central as to exactly what it was. And on the back here, you see Ethernet ports, you see an HDMI, and also you see a power port. So that's what Project Keystone would have been. Uh, I don't, not very sad uh, that this thing isn't coming out. It kind of would have been useless to me especially now with all the different places that Xbox Cloud Gaming is at. What I do hope, however, is that eventually we do see that Xbox Cloud Gaming app show up on more smart TVs out there and that it doesn't just stay locked to certain ones and certain companies and manufacturers. They should get that license out to as many of those TVs as possible. And I think you'll start seeing people actually look at it and see what it's all about. I know I've experienced that cloud streaming app on a Samsung TV and, and it works phenomenally well. It's very nicely integrated into their interface. So you kind of think it's just a part of the TV and you're enticed to go check it out and see what the app is all about. But now there won't be a Keystone. Totally okay with that. We know that there is new Xbox hardware coming out that they showed off at the Xbox Showcase. I'm just really looking forward to what comes next in the next generation, whether that is the handheld and the more powerful gaming console that Xbox presumably is working on. Now, Halo Infinite, let's talk a little bit about Halo Infinite because they're finally adding multi-team game modes into online matchmaking. Of course, Halo Infinite has continuously gotten better, but I feel like we are winding down with this game as there's rumors that they're moving over to a new engine and we've seen them stop with their whole seasons thing and it just seems like Halo Infinite is winding up, but they are still adding content in here and the game is still very fun to play. And it says, as a part of a new update, developer 343 Industries has added various multi-team game modes to the Halo Infinite Combat Workshop. A selection of arena modes can now be played in a multi-team format where four teams clash head to head. So that's, that's awesome. That's always fun. It's great that they're still adding this stuff. They tweet this out. Multi-team is now live in Combat Workshop. Dive into the frenzy with various arena modes where four teams clash head to head and share feedback when the survey rises later this week. So if you want those multi-team 4v4v4 game modes, four team clashes, uh, that's going to be a fun time to jump in and play. Just going to be mayhem everywhere. And I always love that about Halo with those types of game modes where it's just craziness and everyone is just having a great time. Oh, let's, let's jump over here to a very exciting announcement. If you are a Dead Rising fan, Capcom just came out and they announced the Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. Dead Rising, phenomenal game, a phenomenal series. I've enjoyed 
pretty much all of them. And I was hoping we would get a brand new Dead Rising at some point. We're not getting a brand new one, but we are at least getting this. There was a trailer here put out by Capcom, and it says here that coming to the newest generation of platforms, an updated release with a brand new look. I mean, that's all it pretty much says. It's going to be a brand new look. They do mention the fact that people actually got to play it in HD remaster on the modern platforms in 2016. So this is going to be improving on top of that. It's going to look better than that and probably play even better than that. And of course, uh, it's going to be fun zombie killing, creating different weapons. Like it's just a very, very fun game. To play if you haven't checked out the dead rising series i do recommend it and it's great as it is coming out this year it does say in 2024 so i think this is just going to be a random drop at some point and we will just get to be able to play it when that does happen so excited for that dead rising deluxe remaster that's kind of a nice surprise to randomly be given to us especially after summer games fest you don't expect just a random big announcement like this for people who are fans of that series so capcom had that in their back pocket and they decide to just let us know now. Okay, let's talk about Forza Horizon 4 because as we know, we talked about yesterday that they are delisting this game and it is because of licensing issues. And it's not uh, the player counts, I think, playing that much into it as I previously would have thought. And now definitely it is not the player count because... They say, in less than a full day since the announcement of the delisting of Forza Horizon 4, the gaming community has exhibited unprecedented enthusiasm, with players eagerly lining up to dive into the game. Within mere hours of the announcement, Forza Horizon 4 achieved a new all-time player peak record on Steam. So people who heard about this probably got worried, went out, wanted to jump in the game before this game does come offline. Now, at least at the end of the day, if you have purchased it, you're still going to be able to play it when it does come offline. But they broke the peak record here of uh, setting it at 48,437 playing the game. I wonder how long that will last. And if this is just a spike for a day or two because of the fear of not being able to experience the content when it does go offline. I mean, it is a phenomenal Forza game. So go check it out if you have not checked it out yet. Uh, we have some news over here about Steam adding a brand new feature for Steam users here. And that is game recording. They're adding the game recording beta, which is great to see. Just more ways to capture, share, and replay your content. It says a new built-in system for creating and sharing your gameplay footage so it, you can do everything there record it replay it clip it and then share it everything you can do already in many other platforms like you can do on your xbox you can do it on your playstation they are bringing a new one here over to steam they say here with background recording mode your gameplay is continuously saved to your preferred drive never exceeding your specified duration and storage limits and on-demand recording mode with manual start and stop is also available so it's yeah, it's always going to have that background recording. And so you never miss a moment. And I think recording gameplay and sharing it is, is a huge part of any platform. It needs to always be worked on because it, it's just basically free marketing for your, for games on your platform, for the platform itself. When you have gamers sharing that stuff out on social media is one of the things that I sometimes think is neglected because they may not think it's important enough, but if you just go on Twitter, you go on Facebook, you go on any of these social media platforms, people are sharing these game clips and you can see that they are com where they're coming from a lot of the time. So very cool stuff there. And uh, hopefully this is a great feature that Steam continues to improve over time. I'm sure they will. I mean, it looks very cool from what they have announced here. And I will definitely be checking out one of these things is like the timeline and event markers, which is cool. It says the Steam timeline appears where whenever you're actively recording the timeline, enhanced games generate event markers as relevant game events happen. Steam achievements and screenshots will automatically create markers as well. And that's always great when you're playing a game and you kind of forget where did this thing take place? Now you're going to have just some markers that show you exactly where to go if you are looking for a clip and we'll jump over here and again we've been talking about sales on xbox over the last few days and they've been giving great sales and there's some more here called the special halloween in june sale which is live for the next few days games i guess some of them have a halloween theme and i don't think some of them don't but there is a bunch of games here that are on sale one of the games i do want to highlight here because we talked about it yesterday with the mods coming to it so 
If you hadn't picked up the game yet, now may be the best time. The Stalker Legends of the Zone trilogy is actually on sale. 30% off here with this Halloween in June sale. But they've got Assassin's Creed games, Alien Isolation, Far Cry games, WWE 2K24 Deluxe Edition, uh, TMNT. A bunch of stuff here that is on sale here with this Halloween in June sale. And finally, we will quickly talk about this. Another Bethesda studio at Xbox is unionizing, and that is Bethesda Game Studios Montreal. The office is filing for unionization with the Quebec Labor Board. So basically what you need to know about this is that the studio Montreal, one of the four offices making up Bethesda Game Studios, the Xbox developer under ZeniMax Media, they are actually filing for unionization. And they say here to ensure job security as well as improve transparency, accountability, and flexibility. And several teams under Xbox have already unionized, including US based Zenimax, Quality Assurance Employees, and Activision Central Quality Assurance. As we know, unionization was a big talking point when Xbox announced the ABK acquisition. And there was the whole thing here with the different groups out there that were against this deal going through until. Xbox came out and said that they weren't going to get in the way of studios and employees unionizing. And then they gave back their support. And obviously this is an ABK, but this is something that is happening now all under Xbox. And we'll probably see more studios there go through these unionization efforts as people, especially now we have seen throughout 2024 with all the people being laid off and losing their jobs. I think there's probably even more pressure at these studios or employees there to want to unionize. So they aren't hit by these mass layoffs as hard as they have been hit in 2024 but i will end the video there guys if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit that thumbs up if you're new here hit that subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video